Have you ever wondered why Antarctica has snow and ice on the ground year round, but places like Miami never see snow? Or what about parts of the Atacama Desert in South America that has never seen rain? While Big Bog in Hawaii receives over 400 inches of rain per year. I know snow and rain are weather, but what about climate? What is climate and what drives it? Let's find out together in this episode all about Earth's climate system. Before we get to answering those very important questions, it's important to set something straight. The difference between weather and climate. Weather is the minute by minute changes in the atmosphere. Weather is constantly changing, like all the time, every day. For example, just because it's hot and sunny today doesn't mean that I won't need my raincoat tomorrow. Climate is what the weather is like over a long period of time in a specific area. And while weather can change in a few hours, a region's climate takes hundreds, even thousands of years to change dramatically. I've heard it best described like this. If weather is your current mood, then the climate is your personality. So weather is quick current conditions, and climate is the average condition of an area. Like we were talking about earlier, different sections of Earth have different climates. Some places are hot and rainy almost every day. They have a tropical wet climate. Other places are freezing and blanketed in snow most of the year. They have a polar climate. Somewhere in between the frigid poles and the humid tropics, we can find many other climates that wonderfully contribute to the biodiversity of Earth. But how are these different climates formed? Like what elements work together to create these different climates? In order to understand these different climates, we need to get a better look at the big picture, like all of Earth. Our planet has an incredible climate system. Earth's climate system is a highly complex global system consisting of five major components. The atmosphere, the oceans in the hydrosphere, snow and ice in the cryosphere, the land surface in the geosphere, living organisms in the biosphere, and the complex interactions between them. If you aren't already familiar with Earth's spheres, you can check out this video. Two main factors control the Earth's climate system. One, the way that energy from the sun moves in and out of the atmosphere. And two, the way that energy, once converted to heat, moves or cycles around the atmosphere and the oceans. It all starts with the sun. Even though the sun is 93 million miles away, it gives off a ton of energy. Radiation from the sun can either be absorbed or reflected. About 50% of the radiation from the sun that reaches the Earth is absorbed by the top exposed layer, or surface. The Earth's surface absorbs the sun's radiation and gains energy. That energy is felt as heat and warms the surface. The surface eventually releases some of this infrared radiation or heat energy to the atmosphere above through convection, conduction, and radiation. Convection occurs when air warmed by the surface rises upward, moving heat away from the surface. This creates air currents. Conduction transfers heat to cooler air that directly touches the hot surface. Conduction can also transfer heat to water resting on the surface, causing evaporation. Some of this heat escapes back into space but some is absorbed by greenhouse gases. Those gases in the atmosphere then re-emit the absorbed heat. Can you see a bit of a cycle happening? If those greenhouse gases didn't absorb and re-emit heat, Earth wouldn't be warm enough for living organisms to survive. You can learn more by checking out the carbon cycle. This observed cycling of heat wouldn't create such dynamic changes in Earth's climate that we see today without Earth's tilt. Because the Earth tilts, the sun's energy is distributed unevenly across the globe. The intensity changes at different latitudes and in different seasons. As we can see, generally there is more heat at the equator than there is at the poles. This inequality causes Earth to move things around to try to balance things out. So the climate system moves heat from the equator to the poles, from high heat to low heat, through the atmosphere and oceans. Let's look at an example. Near the equator, in a tropical climate, 
As the air warms, it rises and then drifts toward the cooler air or the poles at high levels. This cooler air is getting pushed down out of the way and flows in the opposite direction at the Earth's surface. This is a convection current and also known as a storm cell. This convection action is happening in other areas as you move toward the poles, forming multiple cells. At the boundaries between these cells, air is either rising from the Earth's surface or falling down towards it. Where the air is rising, you will get low pressure, causing precipitation as rain or snow. And in areas where the air is coming down, you will get high pressure and calm, mild weather. That's how heat is moved around the atmosphere. If you're still here liking this video, let us know. And hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Now let's see what role the oceans play in Earth's climate system. Just as we have air currents happening in the atmosphere, there are ocean currents occurring in the hydrosphere. The ocean absorbs heat from the atmosphere and radiation from the sun. These changes in sea temperatures and saltiness create ocean currents. The Gulf Stream, for example, is one of the strongest ocean currents in the world. Winds from the Arctic cool surface water in the North Atlantic. This now cold, dense, salty water begins to sink and travels toward the warm equator deep in the ocean. At the same time, the Gulf Stream replaces this cooled sinking water with warm water from the Gulf of Mexico. This is just one example. There are many other ocean currents moving heated water around the globe. The geosphere, biosphere, and cryosphere also contribute to the Earth's climate system. In the geosphere, the Earth's surface determines the amount of energy that is being absorbed or reflected back to space in that area. Changes due to forestry, agriculture, and urbanization directly impact this absorption. The frozen part of Earth's hydrosphere is made of ice, glaciers, ice caps, and icebergs, and has its own name, the cryosphere. The bright white of snow and ice reflect large amounts of solar energy back to the atmosphere. Ice also helps to insulate the ocean and the land. Living organisms in the biosphere change the chemical makeup of the atmosphere. Plants and algae absorb carbon dioxide and release water vapor, for example and humans have increased carbon dioxide and other chemicals through pollution. It's these complex interactions between the sun's energy and how the atmosphere and oceans move and transfer heat around the world that creates all the different climates around the Earth. So the next time you travel somewhere, make sure to research the climate because you might be shocked at how different it is from what you're used to. And if you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next. It's like 100 degrees today. Texas, I think I'm sweating. It's fine. It's fine. We got this.